hospital with seizures starting at six months of age. The seizures were obviating semiology. She was already on multiple anti-hypnotics, but the seizures were not controlled. She, at the time of presentation, she had global developmental delay and could be made to sit with, without support. There was no fine motor milestones, significant language impairment, and she was communicated only with crying and aberrant hearing impairment. She was a third born child to a non contaminated married couple, but there was no family history of any neurological complaints. There were no complaints during the antenatal or the natal or the pregnancy period. The child was microcephalic with a head circumference of less than 3 standard deviation, was under weight 76% of the median, and with a normal height and BMI. On examination, she had contractures at ankles, knees, and elbows, limiting her functioning, right sided hemiparesis, hearing impairment, but none of the cranial nerves were affected, and a normal fitness examination was recorded. There were multiple hypopigmented macules, ashy spots over the forehead, right uh, post auricular region, and the lower back. A shagreen patch, a facial angiofibroma, a hypopigmented genius on the left upper thigh, and a tuft of hair in the midline of the lumbar sacral region, which was thought to be a spinal vagina or pelta, or spinal dysrhapsy, and a high ash palace. Based on the clinical phenotype, the diagnosis was suspected to be tuberous sclerosis. On further investigating the child, the EEG of the child showed an interhemispheric asymmetry with depression of rhythm on the left side and left semicrotemporal spike and wave discharge on the left side, suggesting a left sided localized epileptic focus. The CV head revealed cerebral atrophy and chiral calcifications in the left temporal parieto occipital region and multiple calcific foci in the subepidermal locations along bilateral atrial ventricles. The MRI of the brain showed absent cortical tubers enlarged lower plexus, leptomeningeal angiomas, and the presence of extensive viral calcification. The bell of the child recorded a bilateral profound sensory neural hearing loss at 90 decibels. The IQ of the child was 18, suggesting profound mental retardation, which is seen in around 3.6% cases of tuberous sclerosis patients. The visual therapy both potentials, the intraocular tension, echo, and MRI of the spine of the child were found to be normal. So, keeping in uh, <coughs> view with the differentiate with the features of some features suggestive of tuberous sclerosis, while the others suggestive of Sturge Weber, a genetic analysis of the child was planned, and a genetic sample was sent, which was processed using PCR and MLPA, which showed a heterozygous mutation in axon 18 of TSC1 type 1 gene. Further management of the child involved the genetic counseling of the parents, appropriate anticonvulsants, interventional physiotherapy, and further discharge. This was the uh, CT head, which is uh, suggestive of uh, cerebral atrophy and viral calcifications. Further, MRI imaging of the child at the uh, time of admission showed linear tortures, cramp type calcifications, and sub calcified supplement diamond nodules. This was the genetic test which was performed. A paper has been presented by our esteemed faculty, Dr. Sharmila, on the same patient because of the overlapping features in 2015 Journal of Neurology. But the story doesn't end here. The child was a loss to follow and presented to us seven years later with us. So the developmental delay was still persistent. The child was more bedridden and with contractures in the fingers of hands, no gain in language domain, and no gain of milestones for the past seven years. The seizures were uncontrolled still. There was bleeding from a mandibular swelling for the past two days. The swelling was persistent for the past one and a half years. There were two episodes of vomiting since morning and a swelling in the right breast. This is the clinical picture of the child, which is showing right side mandibular swelling. This swelling was had started from past one and a half years, was small to begin with, and had an aggressive course, was progressively increasing. The child was an OPD patient, and during OPD visits, this was the CCT of the mandible which was planned, which showed a large expansile lithic lesion, which was extending up to midline, and some uh, soft tissue and, and involvement was also seen with few bony septa. The uh, cortical thinning was noticed in the CECT. Further MRI of the same uh, swelling showed smooth marginated, loculated, homogeneous soft tissue lesion, which was displaying high content signals of, uh, involving body of the mandible, and there was a loss of the ipsilateral caline tooth. On the basis of the MRI findings, a uh, diagnosis of uh, desmoplastic fibroma was kept. Now coming to the swellings of the child. The right side mandibular swelling was persisting for the past one and a half years. The child was on OPD follow-up, <coughs> but nothing had been done other than the FNAC of the child, which showed desmoplastic fibroma. Around eight cases of desmoplastic fibroma have been seen in children with tuberous sclerosis. The child, uh, at the time of presentation to us, the swelling was around firm to hard in consistency, 
with around five, five, five by four by four centimeters of dimensions. Uh, there was a breast mass which was uh, suspected to be a fibroidoma because of the firm consistency. Uh, now, in our 2013 Japanese study, around 95 patients were screened for endocrine hospital anomalies, out of which six patients had some form of memory tumors. The fibroidoma and the uh, desmoplastic fibroma were proposed to be removed in a surgical management. Uh, at the time of uh, intraoperative, and during the uh, this was the report which was suggested for fibroidoma. This was also done on OPD basis. This is the intra of picture of the medullary swelling, which had caused significant destruction uh, of the uh, bony part of the medulla, the right half of the medulla. So, uh, keeping in view of the increasing mass, increasing size of the swelling, and the significant this uh, significant discomfort it was causing to the child with difficulties in closing the mouth and swallowing, uh, the surgery was carried out. At the time of surgery, the histopathological sample of the swelling was sent, which revealed a mix of fibrosarcoma of the mandible, grade 2, of size 9 by 5 by 4. Some ILC markers were also put on the same swelling, which showed positivity for calponium, vimentin, CK7, SMA, BCL2, and a focal positivity for CD99 also. Following the surgery, the child deteriorated, was ventilated, intubated for uh, around uh, 20 days, developed AKI, sepsis, ventilator-associated pneumonia, ARDS, and finally had succumbed to her morbidity. This is the uh, discopathic report, which is showing the ILC markers which came out positive for the swelling, and the breast lump, which was fibroid number. This is the various histological slides of the same tumor. At, uh, in the last slide, we can see there are stated shaped macrophages, which, is, which are the atypical cells of the fibroid are the ILC markers which showed possibility for CD99, myelin and SM. Now the highlights of the case, the child, the case was uh, curious in the sense that the child had severe intellectual disability, which is seen in around 3.6% of TS patients. There was a radiological rarity of overlap, overlapping features between cell level and tuberous sclerosis. The aggressive mandibular marks, desmoplastic fibroma, eight cases have been reported in literature, and mix of fibrosarcoma of mandible. Only one case report is available of odontogenic mixofibroma sarcoma of gingiva in TS patients. A fibroidoma, six patients had memory tumors according to the Japanese study, and an unusual pubertal course. Uh, the diagnosis of tuberous sclerosis uh, will require, a, uh, the definitive diagnosis will involve a genetic analysis, or we can go with the clinical criteria, which will require either at least two major, or one major and one, two of the minor features. And MRI should show supplemental uh, nodules and particle tubers in the cerebral combinations. In this, for making a diagnosis of sterile fever, we require the involvement of skin and CNS with, in form of seizures, hemiparesis, stroke-like episodes, mental retardation, and in the ophthalmological involvement of glaucoma or buphthalmos. The facial involvement is also characteristic in the form of port wine stain, which is a unilateral capillary malformation. And the CT scan will be suggestive of extensive cortical gyrus and file calcification. This is a picture which is uh, showing the, uh, the patients uh, in the literature. There are around eight patients, including our patients, our patient with tuberous sclerosis and surge Weber overlap. Uh, comparing the features, uh, it has been found that profound mental retardation was found only in our patient, and sensory neural uh, hearing loss was also documented in the patient who presented to us. The gyral and fire calcifications were seen in around four of uh, the overlapping patients. Uh, it can be uh, made as an uh, assumption that a patient who is having a gyral cerebral calcification is more likely to have a profound mental retardation. This is a Japanese study which was carried out in 2013 over the course of 10 years during which they studied around 166 tuberous sclerosis patients for the frequency and characteristics of various manifestations. Tuberous sclerosis is a disorder which involves basically uh, the hematomas or the benign tumors have been commonly associated with tuberous sclerosis uh, due to the defect in the mTOR pathway. They can be picomas or subependinal giant cell nodules or rhabdomyosarcomas, sarcomas, but there can be some cases of malignancies also. Desmoplastic fibroma, which, which is an intraoral manifestation of this multi system disorder, was seen in our patient. The tumor has a tendency to form proliferative fibroblastic hematomas and it is a mean size of around 40 mm, which is almost half the size of uh, the uh, human which we rejected from this patient. 
the incidence desmoplastic hygroma is a, is a benign but an aggressive tumor with an incidence of 0.11% of all the bone tumors. It has a tendency to uh, affect females more than the males and presents more mostly during the child feeding age. There's a, even after the removal of desmoplastic hygroma, there is a chances that it will recur with a higher rate. This is the case report which is showing, uh, which shows that seven cases have been reported of DS with uh, in TS patients. The, in case of desmoplastic fibroma, this is an aggressive tumor. During the because of its aggressive course, it can cause some, it can uh, cause uh, perineural encasement, difficulty in mouth opening, and will uh, cause over uh, loosening of the overlying tooth, TMJ dysfunction, sinusitis, and even obstruction. All these complications definitely have a mass effect and cause significant difficulty to the affected patient. Some patients may have, may have either cavity mutation, while it can be uh, negative also in most of the cases. The treatment of desmoplastic fibroma is end block resection of the tumor with a wide margin followed by reconstruction. Aggressive curatage can also be adopted as one of the measures along with endor and bitters. This patient has mix of fibrosarcoma of the mandible, which has an incidence of around 0.04 to 3.7 percent. This is the previous case report of a uh, similar tumor affecting the gingivo of tuberous sclerosis patient. Now the puberty, this child had regular menstrual cycles which was starting at 11 years of age, but she had poorly developed breasts with only small amount of glandular tissue and poorly developed areola. No axillary or pubic hair growth was seen in this patient. The ultrasound pelvis was normal and the level of LH, FSH and Easter oil were also within normal ranges. Uh, therefore, we were left with no explanation to the pubertal unusuality. This is the spectrum of the rare associations which were seen in this patient, which is severe ID, radiological rarity of the overlapping features, desmoplastic fibroma, mix of fibrosarcoma of mandible, pubertal unusuality, and fibroid tumor breast. Coming to the uh, second last slide, uh, how could this case have been uh, better managed? Since the patient was a loss to follow, it was difficult to keep a track if she had developed any new findings. But at the time of mandibular swelling, the patient presented only to the outpatient department where only an FNAC could be done and no further management could be planned because the tumor was aggressively increasing and causing significant compromise of the airway of the child. And so the uh, journal anesthesia uh, during which the procedure was planned could not be easily, uh, easily administered to the child. It could have been a wiser choice to start uh, with the endor inhibitors considering the aggressive growth of the tumor. But again, the financial constraints were also an important issue. Finally, acknowledging, uh, I would like to acknowledge the patient and her family, and the Department of Pediatric Surgery, Pathology, Radio Diagnosis, and the Department of Pediatrics for the multidisciplinary management which we could try to do this patient.